Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again. We're going to do a Shimano TLD 25. It's a lever drag reel from the, uh, the late 1980s and 90s. I think this is the 90 version. Uh, there were two different uh, engineering changes on this particular one. But we're going to work on this today. I'll show you how to take it apart, what the reel is made of, how to, to clean it, lube it, and get it back fishing again. So if, if you like what you see, I would ask you to subscribe, to like this uh, video, and to add comments to it uh, so that uh, we can continue to build our subscriber base. So with that, let's get started. We're going to start by taking the handle off, and the first thing you do there is find the appropriate screwdriver. In this case, we have a Phillips head screwdriver as the set screw, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. And that one's a little, little tight there, so let's go for a flat bladed because they have a through screw uh, for a flat screw blade as well. Now we'll take the handle off by using a uh, handle nut wrench, and the Shimano's pretty much use the same handle wrench as the pen. So uh, if you have one of those, you'll uh, be able to use it. In this case, this is the larger nut, which is the one that's for the, uh, the 6.0. And uh, just checking that doesn't work on that one, so we'll come back on that. Okay, next up then, once you remove the handle, is you want to take off the lever assembly. And when I do this, I like to take it off in the free spool mode. So I, I bring it all the way over to the side, and then I can back out the preset adjuster. And what I want to tell you while we're doing this is to keep track of your pieces and your parts. So one of the best ways to do that is go out onto the internet. This one came from Mike's Real Repair. And it's a schematic diagram of the TLD25, which is the reel that we are working on. Also take pictures along the way. And I happen to be doing that here uh, with my video camera. But take pictures on a digital camera, take them on the cell phone, take them as a movie if you like, so that you know as you're working your way through where the pieces, excuse me, where the pieces and parts came from in the event that something goes awry and you get a little bit stuck. So underneath that then we have the adjuster. Make sure that that's set right. And I put these into a parts tray so that I don't lose track of them. And then inside of that, then, we have the hard washer, which is what the back of the assembly works on. So once you do that, then we can start working towards taking the case off. There's two screws that are the bump stops for the full drag assembly and the free spool. And then there's one in the middle here, which is a recessed screw. So you want to get all of those out of there. And I'm not sure if the... Yep, we'll be able to do that. So the outside two have collars on them. Just keep the collar with the screw as you put it into your parts tray. Notice that those are smaller screws than the, the bigger one that is in the middle there. But if you can get those out in one piece, all the better. And then we'll come over here and we'll take the recessed screw in the middle off. Okay. Keep those as close as you like. Some folks like to organize that by taking the, the faceplate assembly and putting them into a little plastic bag. So why don't we just show you how to do that just in case. Because there are a lot of screws on this reel and, and sometimes you can confuse them. So if you want to just go ahead and take what you've done so far and put those into a retaining bag, that's, that's going to work fine. Okay. One more there, the hand set screw. And then you can just put that off to the side. And now we're at uh, the business end of the reel then. This is the, the part of the reel that does all the work. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. We're going to go ahead and pull those out. Again, these are Phillips head screws. Folks ask me at this point, usually why don't you use a mechanical screwdriver or something like this. And uh, I generally don't do that. It just happens to be on my desk. But uh, I don't like the torque on them. Now, taking out the screws, that's fine. Uh, generally, you're not going to injure anything. If you, if you have a screw that's stuck, you may strip the threads out of it, but uh, you won't, uh, probably won't injure anything. Going back in on graphite cases, I don't like it. Um, there's a lot of torque in those, 
and uh, you can split the case if you over tighten so just a word of caution there I'm not going to tell you to do it or not do it I'm just going to tell you my preferences my preferences are to do it by hand and I understand that there's folks out there that lack the hand strength and can't do it just in that case just a word of caution be careful as you do that okay I'm going to move over to the back side now take the two off the real seat and what I'm doing is I'm putting these things in there is I'm checking to make sure that the length of the screws are all the same. Uh, pen reels, for example, when you take a side plate off on some of their older reels, the length of the screws on to the reel seat are less than the other cross post screws. And you want to make a note there just so that as you go to reassemble the reel you have the screws in the right place. Sometimes if you don't, like on a Shimano bump guard, uh, if you take the wrong screw and you put it into the long bump guard, you're going to impede the level line function of the internal gearing. So there's a lot of uh, reasons why this is just learned from experience that I've put uh, the wrong screw in the wrong place from time to time and uh, it's caused problems. So just be aware of that. As you notice, I've switched over to the flat blade screw, screwdriver, even though a uh, Phillips head can be used here. It just seems like it's cooperating more. Okay, that's the last of the screws then. And we should see a little bit of a push out now with the springs. So this is Captain Pat's reel. He, he sent it to me, and uh, he said that they're all due for an overhaul. So that's what we're going to be doing today. They didn't notice anything broken in this one so uh, that was a good reason to use this for an example all right with all the screws out then we can pull this off that'll show us the main gear assembly in the back this is a single speed reel and then we have the business end of this which is the um, the spool so let's go to the main drive first and then we'll come back and we'll show you the internals of the spool and uh, how to go ahead and, and get that done. So two, two pieces here, then we have the spool gear, we have the main gear, we have the anti-reverse which I just uh, popped off there but that's okay, we'll show you how to put that back on. We have a ball bearing up top here. That bearing's got a lot of grease in it. it looks like it's accumulated. We'll try and get what we can get off of that. And then we're going to oil the bearing. I prefer oil on bearings as opposed to the um, greases because if there's several water intrusion in that and salt for example gets stuck in there I tend to find that it, it acts as an abrasive because it sticks more. Okay, I'm just going to clean the shaft of the, the main gear off. Just taking a look, making sure all the teeth are in good stead, that they're all even, that they're not chipped or cracked. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, grease back on there now. I'm going to use a pen precision reel grease. No harm, no foul. I'm using pen grease on Shimano reels. Uh, there are some folks that uh, want to be the purest. Uh, all I'm going to tell you is use the, the real grease. It's, it's use a real grease and uh, you'll be okay. It doesn't matter who's manufacturer. All right, to set that dog now, we have brought the main gear in but the dog is actually behind the trip mechanism at this point. So what you want to do is you want to pull the pull the dog up so that it sets and you'll see it come through on this side. I'm just making sure that I'm seated properly here. see that we're operating properly. I'm going to put a little bit of grease onto the teeth of this one. You don't have to get every tooth, just a few of them. That'll spread itself over time. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to check the main shaft here. We're going to check all the teeth. Wipe out some of the old grease. It all seems way it should look. Go ahead and grab this then. We're going to reinsert that and this side of the 
servicing is done. I'm just going to put that in there and we're going to go to the business end of this reel, which is all in the spool. This assembly came out. This goes on the back end of the reel over here. There's a shim washer. And there's the cap. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Over here, you're going to notice as you read underneath here, unscrew and an arrow. So that's going to tell you how to get the main plate off of this. Usually you can turn it by hand, sometimes you can't. This one has the ridges, so we should be able, there we go, it has the ridges on the outside, so we should be able to do that. And this is another place where you want to take your pictures then, you want to make sure that you We've got this the right way as they come off in sequence. So the first thing off then is going to be that cap. Next thing up is the pressure plate. That's fine. A ball bearing. And a small ball bearing I put right back into that pressure plate. We have the drag washer next, which is core or key to the servicing. Let's pull that out. That's a fabric drag washer. This one's in good condition. Just uh, put a little bit of grease on there. We have the spring, and then we have an internal ball bearing sitting there on top of that. Let's go ahead and do the, the drag washer service while I got this open. I'm going to grab some Cal's Universal Drag Grease, and I'm just going to just kind of glop it on. I'm going to use my gloved hand to work the drag grease into that washer. And then I'm going to wipe off any excess. The idea here is to keep it flexible. You don't want to overload the, the washer with the grease. And we can do the same thing on the other side. Again, we'll, we'll get a little bit of grease on there. We're going to just lube it up. Wipe off the excess. And then that washer's fine. So we have the washer and the pressure plate. I'm just going to put the, the right back together there. The spring. I'm going to take all of that and put that into the basket. And now you see why putting pieces and parts into the envelope is good because you'd have a pretty crowded basket at this point. Okay, then we should be able to pull the uh, axle shaft and service the inside of this. We want to take the two set screws off the collar. That's one. Here's the second. Then the assembly can be pulled out. I wanted to get to both of these bearings. There's a bearing on this side. A group of shim washers. You don't have to go any further on this than just what we're doing here uh, in terms of servicing, but you do want to get to the bearing, which was important. So we'll take that bearing. We're going to again use real oil. In this case, I'm using Real X, which is a synthetic real oil. I also like to, at this point, put a little bit of lubrication onto the shaft here. So I'm going to grab my brush. Move the shaft up here. Then I can just simply reinstall. This reel is clean. It doesn't appear to need any kind of cleaning going on in there. We'll put that back. We've got that inner burring here, so we're going to put that on and then make sure that that gets its drink of oil there. Grab our spring. Grab the next burring. So this is fairly common in a setup for a lever drag reel. So if you've got a 15 or you've got a, uh, even a pen, uh, like the 25 graphite lever senator or uh, any of those, you pretty much have the same uh, sequence of events there. I'm just going to clean the, the pressure plate off here. Put the pressure plate back on. Then 
we saw how to unscrew by going this way, so it's actually a reverse screw. You would normally go clockwise to tighten. In this case, you hand tighten. Just hold it, and you're in good stead there. We're just going to wrap the, the braid around this one again. Come over to the back side now and put those two screws into the collar to hold that in. And then we'll be able to reinstall this. And then we should just be able to tighten the reel up. It's a fairly simple idea in terms of how the, the reel functions. Those springs hold the pressure plate out and as you tighten the, the lever, you compress that spring and you put pressure on the pressure plate to put pressure on to the washer and uh, that's, that's what holds everything. So if you put uh, halfway through first strike, for example, on your uh, back there, the way we should be, you have the pin come out of the back of the spool here, so we'll put that pin back in. You set that pin as, a, as the letter T, and then you grab your side here. There's nothing that needs to be done here in terms of that. There's, there is a warden clicker in here, I guess, on the click tongue, you could uh, put a drop of oil or two. If you wanted to replace that uh, click tongue, you could go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that during the service. And then you want to just line this up so that you can get that uh, the fork of the, the letter T into the into the position. Okay, so there we go. It just took a little bit of manipulating there rest of this line back in. All right, now let's grab the side plate. And again, we'll just take a quick test, make sure nothing came out of place in terms of the anti-reverse for that. Set this. There we go. All right. Sometimes it takes a little patience. Don't force anything. And then we can go ahead and do the screws back in. And I like to go north, south, east, west on these. There's a lot of screws here, so this is going to be a little redundant. But uh, keep the pressure even as you go to reinstall. So put it back top come on down and do a bottom one rather than going in a circular motion and finding yourself stuck with um, a, a bulge on one side perhaps you can uh, alternate positions on this thing just to make sure that it uh, it's holding tight and that you don't have a unusual pressure in one side or the other and again if you're using a mechanical screwdriver to your hands then what I would tell you at this point is don't drive them all the way home get them started perhaps give them a few turns but leave it shy of the the finish and just finish the last piece of it by hand if uh, if doing this is, is difficult for you all right lots of screws here that's why this uh, parts tray is good it reminds you what you've done and how many more you got to do. And I find parts trays just so much better, so much easier than uh, laying the screws out on the table and having your, uh, your shirt brush aside one and knock it to the floor and create some havoc there. So, all right, there we go. Two more to go, I think. Yep, two more in the uh, in a parts tray. Two more are available openings here, so we'll be done in a moment and we'll just go back and put the rest of that assembly together there. Alrighty, just making sure they're tight now. You gotta tighten these up. If you're using these for trolling, uh, that engine vibration in the boat, if those screws aren't tight, 
that engine vibration will just loosen these right up and next thing you know you'll be missing screws in your reel and that's not just for the particular lever drive we're working on here that's a general statement those engines throw a lot of vibration and uh, has a way of working the screws out of their positions so just take note make sure that they're nice and tight not over tight but nice and tight so that you're comfortable confident that uh, they're not going to fall out okay that's the last one of these we've got the uh, cap goes back on there again I'm going to open up my little piece and I'm going to put these into the parts tray that we had in then before. And just because this one's so big, I'm going to take that out. I know that that blue one goes there. It's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. Next up then what we're really doing is this trim ring. Remember we had the two small pointed ones and we have the inset in here. Let's grab one of those insets. Best way to do this one usually is to put the middle one in first. Just seems to center everything and hold it in place. We have the two that have the bump stops on them. No matter which side at this point. And we'll go over to the other side, finish this thing. So lever drags are very popular. Uh, they hold a lot of line. In this case, you see we got braid on there, so you can run this thing out a long way. Uh, they're for the bigger fish, which um, is always a, uh, a challenge in terms of uh, line and capacity and the like. And uh, a lot of folks uh, enjoy this. So uh, if you're going to get one, uh, this is a good reel to go get. Remember, we started in the off position, so I'm going to put that in the off position right now. We have the spring and the cap is next. This is the preset adjuster. We're going to make sure that we got a spin and as we throw we should start to see the the handle take effect. Put the handle on. Now this one was not tightened down. With the wrench. So I'm gonna I have a Shimano wrench, I just don't have it in my hands, so we're just gonna hand tighten this for now. Okay, so I paused the uh, video for a moment. The gloves came off and I went and got my tool that uh, sets the handle screw. So let's go ahead and put that in place then. And then we can give this thing a test drive and, and send it back out and go catch, catch some more fish there. Just lining up that little uh, indented slot there with the set screw hole. You grab that set screw then. And if all goes well, we should have a fully functioning restored reel where we took it all apart. We showed you how this reel is made. We, uh, we refreshed the, uh, the drags. We oiled all the bearings. We put it back together again. Now we got a nice smooth operation here at the moment. Let's go take it over to here to the free spool. Make sure that that's working. It's working nicely. First strike. And then we should have, we have a little bit of play in first strike, which is what it should be. And at full set, well, we could probably tighten it down a little bit. All right, free spooling, first strike, max drag. Yep, we're set. Okay, Pat, that's one down and a couple more to go. But I did want to uh, show everybody how to make this uh, reel uh, a champ again. So that's the Shimano TLD25. I hope you've enjoyed it. As we mentioned at the beginning, always seeking subscribers. Let your fishing friends know about this channel. Please subscribe if you already haven't. 
and uh, please stay tuned for more. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.